everyone, welcome. I am starting this video on the, I believe it's the 27th or the 26th of February, and I'm hoping to have it up around the 1st of March, so it'll be kind of my first of the month kickoff video. This is Fairy Tale Princess Coloring Book. This is Mystic Art Mirrors. I purchased it off of Etsy. And there is a flip through on my channel if you want to see the rest of the book. Tonight, I wanted to jump in and face my fears because I this book I wanted for so long and it's so pretty. I But I'm going to face my fears and jump in and color it because it was a gift and someone did spend money on it for me. So, I am going to try this page. I love Rapunzel, love Tangled. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit what, um, kind of about what I'm doing. Um, I would love to know how everybody else is doing, how you're feeling. I've missed being on here, getting to read all the comments. Um, so first of all, I'm going to use Distressed Ink just for the base layer of the bricks. And that's just because this is kind of a large picture and there's not a lot of room for background as it is. So I don't want anything that's going to take too much away from the princess herself. And then I'm going to kind of just fill it in around it with some colored pencils. I'm going to use markers probably on her skin and hair. And so we'll see how it goes. Now this video, because I know you don't want to watch me do all these bricks repeatedly, moving down the paper and watch me tape and retape. I'm going to try to break into segments, so I will tape a little bit, and then I will finish it, and then I'll come back and tape a little more, and then put them together in the end, and hope it's not too choppy. If it is comes out horrible and you guys don't like it that way, please let me know so I can improve for next time. But I am still learning, and this is just fun for me, so I just kind of want to jump in and join and say hi while I try out new things. So the first thing... I'm going to do is I taped my stencil to my large piece of paper. This is a legal size paper and I just taped my stencil to the paper underneath. I did not tape it to my coloring book paper because when I move it I do not want it to um, yank anything off the paper or rip it. I do like this paper because it goes all the way around the edge of the paper so I won't have any kind of mess ups. I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. I am left-handed, so I'm going to turn it a little and work this way. Very important with distressed inks that you don't just set it down and then start blending or you will get a blotch. You can't work out. You do kind of have to start on the edge and work your way in. This is going to be a little bit of a slower process because I do have to work around the lines. Obviously, I don't want the whole page purple. And I need to make some areas darker. Some bricks will be darker than the other. That is the intention I'm going for. Just in case you're wondering why I'm doing things like that. There are lots of ways you can do bricks. You can also put the stencil under the paper. What that does is reverse your image. So instead of having the white under the stencil where the lines are, they will be purple and your bricks will be white. So that's kind of a fun thing to try also when you're playing around with your things. Now I bumped it. So this is basically all this background is going to take for now is just distressed inks going around very carefully. I don't want a very even layer, bricks aren't even, and when I go back in with the pencils they will help to kind of add texture to it, but I want to make sure that I do have purple over everywhere at least. So I am going to make this part darker, be careful of the drawing. These are Pieces of hair I'm not too worried about. I will go over. When I take this stencil off, I will get closer to her hair. But this just kind of gives me an idea of where I'm at. I like that. I want it to be a very modern sort of look.
hence the purple bricks. You know, there's not a lot of purple bricks around. Circles to blend. So that is how I'm going to do that. I am going to finish it up and then I will come back when I have all the bricks done in the distressed ink and show you how I add in the pencil and whatnot. So see you soon. All right, so this is the bricks. This is the bricks done in distressed ink. I have not touched them with pencil yet. I kind of want to go in and do some of my other details just so I know how dark or light I want them. So um, I'm going to leave them for a minute. This, I'm working on the skin tone. These are the Artix Alp skin tone markers. These are my favorite ever skin tones. And if you're a beginner, they are a great way to familiarize yourself with skin tones. They have light to dark and blush colors. They are very, they are double ended. Um, you can mix and match. There's not a certain thing they have to go with. Um, so it's great. So I went in with my dark first and put where all my shadows are, where I wanted them, where I thought they would be. Um, and then I went in, I did her lips pink just as a base color so that this pink wouldn't look odd being only on her cheeks. But I probably will add some color to these. And then I added her blush on her cheeks where I wanted it. More shadows. And now I'm going to go in with 317. This is going to be my lightest color. And I'm just going to blend it all together. So what I like to do is go in circles over the edges of the other colors. And these markers, they are a bit, they're really juicy. So it will take a second to dry before you get to see what the actual color looks like. I have not had any trouble in this book with the ink smearing with the markers. I have had that trouble in some books. Not with this one. So that's all I do is just kind of rub over the edges of the other colors till I get what I'm looking for. Obviously I want that spot of her hand to be lighter. This spot I will probably need to add a little bit of dark into just because it is in a shadow of that ribbon on her dress. I don't want it to look weird. Um, these markers do take pencil over them really well. If that is an option you choose, if you want to draw on tattoos or add scars or just add more shading, more depth to the skin than you are getting with your markers. I am not a skin expert, still working on it myself, so I kind of like to stick to what I know and the basics. This is what I have found works for me. I do like these markers with the Arteza skin colors though. Okay, so that's what we have so far, and then we're going to hop into the face. Um, there is one section of this face, I think I'm going to go one shade lighter. Now with these eyelashes, these eyelashes are so long. I did not go over each individual eyelash with my darkest color, but I did hit a few of the longer ones. I went all the way under the eye, and then I brought out some of the longer ones with shadow, because obviously if you have um, eyelashes hanging that far down on your face, you're going to have a shadow. That is what I did there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this skin color on her eyelids, but I probably will give her eyeshadow. But when I do skin tones on the face, I try to think of it as like I'm putting on my makeup. I want to put on my base color first, and then I'm going to add my eyeshadow over top. And then I would put on my eyeliner and my mascara. So that's kind of how I think of doing Skin on the face as I try to do it the same. Now I did put the pink down first but that's just because for me it blends a little better if I can go over it with the lightest color. So I know that part is a little backwards but 
for the most part, if you're having a hard time remembering, you want to go lightest to darkest and then the same way you would do makeup. I'm just kind of going in circles, get a nice even, don't want no marker lines. These markers do not streak. They are very easy to color with. That's another one of my favorites. Okay, then I'm going to take 314. This is even one shade lighter. And I'm just going to do her nose with it. I just want that little bit of highlight on her nose. And you can even go over certain spots and it'll lighten it up a little bit for you and it won't leave the streaky effect. So if you wanted to go down here on her neck and fix a little bit, make that arm right there a little brighter. So that is our skin. Um, the next thing I'm going to jump into is her hair. So I'm going to do a base color yellow, uh, probably a lighter yellow, and then go in with pencils and add some highlights. So I will be back when I have the base coat on and show you how I do that. See you soon. All right, so this is where I've gotten to. I went ahead and did her hair with just a base coat of the Touch New. This is Pastel Yellow, number 37. And then I played with a couple colors. I couldn't decide if I wanted to go more orange glow or a darker color, um, things her hair glows. But I decided, I think I like this, um, goodness, Goldenrod and this yellow for now to start my shading. So all I, did was go in with my dark color everywhere there's going to be shading. I didn't worry about staying in the lines on the strands or anything like that. And I will add a couple dark spots in a couple other places, but for the basic concept, you just your dark is always your shadow. So there's going to be shadow right here. And I am using the Teagall Sharpener provided by Jamie at Jamie's Coloring Law. She was like, you have to try this sharpener. And she was so serious about trying this sharpener because she knows I'm a Prisma girl. I love my Prismas and it's hard to find a sharpener that doesn't eat up your Prismas. And so she kindly got one for me and I'm glad she did. I do love using it with my Prismas. I feel like it saves a quite a bit of my Prismas as well. colored in that flower. That's all right. I've got an eraser, an electric eraser. I will clear it out. Put a shadow right here. Kind of go around this a little bit. And this is all just kind of your own judgment. There's no right or wrong. You can add in between colors if you like. I still might go in with a darker brown even in some of the extra dark shadow spots. I'll have to see how it's looking when I get all this in. I am going to go darker just around the edges a little bit just so it gives this curl a little bit of a brighter look. Shadow right here where her arm is. I am going to put a dark strand just down the middle of this. Not going to stay in the line. Same with these. Just going to add a little light. Add a little dark streak down right here. Um, around Pascal's feet. And that's just how I think I'm going to let that one go. I think I need a dark streak right here. It's looking a little bright. Darken it up in the middle. Um, it is kind of a lot of just 
coloring a little bit, testing it out, seeing what you think. Pencils erase, but it is always easier to add more than to take away. It's a good tip when working with pencils. It's kind of what I try to remember. If I get to the point where uh, I'm not sure if I need more or less, I always go less. So it's easier to add more than try to erase some out at the end when you decide that that doesn't look like you want it to. All right, that's looking pretty good. So this yellow pretty much matches the yellow marker I used to put down. So then all I do is just kind of go real slow in circular motions and just kind of tone it down a little and pull it out. We don't want any defined lines. Shadows are perfect. And if there's anywhere your markers were streaky or anything like that, like this spot right here, you could turn that down, please. I'm trying to do this while the kids are awake so nobody is cooperating with me. I know there was a lady that was getting offended about kids in the background. Sorry if you're on here. It is a part of life. Okay, I'm just going to blend up in between these flowers. Pull that down. I got a strand right there all together, so I'll fill it in with my pencil and you won't even notice. Um, at the end, if you don't like how your lines are kind of looking a little light from coloring over, you can go over with your electric eraser and erase the line and it'll go back to looking black just like it was. Now my trick will be uploading all these videos or getting them all put on to upload in order. that looks that's pretty okay so just the same thing I'm gonna go in small circles right here really make sure they blend don't want any rough or harshness fix that one a little bit All right, so the next thing I think I'm going to work on after this hair, trying to decide what I want to do next. Probably need to get Pascal out of the way. I did do her eyes green. She does have green eyes, but I kind of multi-purpose. I did the green so that I could put the leaves in Pascal and kind of pull my color palette all in together. Right, and then I will just go along and clear out any rough spots I see as I go. I'm going to leave it for a minute though. Why I do Pascal, I think there was someone who wanted to see how I blended markers, and he's kind of a perfect little guy to do that on because he's color changing and whatnot. So. We'll go ahead and get him done, and then I will come back in and finish this hair off camera. And then we can do her outfit and flowers. So it will take me a second to get all these rough spots out. And I will go over her eyelashes with a, probably a whatever black pen, black fine, fine liner I have handy. So that will fix those, so I'm not really worried about those right off. Okay, I'm going to leave her hair for a minute. Why I picked my pastel colors, I'm going to, I will go ahead and show you what colors I'm thinking. So I think she's going to be that color. I think I 
need a dark. And I might even add a little dot of blue in there. Okay. So darkest color first. So I am going to put this dark blue on the lines in his eyes. Make sure I'm on camera here. Down his nose. Now technically I know he would be purple to blend in with the bricks, but for the purpose of this page, I'm going to keep him his green color. I'm going to just kind of put in the dark spots, just like I did the skin color, same concept. So you can outline him completely in the blue, however you wish to do it. I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. Then I'm going to take this darker color and just kind of go right over the top. And I know it looks like it's just covering the blue, it will work itself out. Shadow spot. And you don't want to do all because you want to leave your room for your lighter colors, make him look like he's changing colors, make it darken right here, around that eye, okay, I'm going to do little spots in with this marker as well, okay, the next color is going to be this one, this is my lightest, same thing as the skin, blend, 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 color over the edges. I'm going to leave that spot there white because I still have one more color to go. Same with this, blend, 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 but leave some white. I'm going to do the highlight of his face in the brighter color. So the key to blending alcohol markers is to make sure your markers really go well together. The better they go together and transition, um, the easier it is to get a better looking fade out of it. Leave that spot. I don't need any perfectly straight lines. I'm not too worried about that. But my blue will not go into my green. So I have to make sure anywhere I have a color that's going to touch this bright green, I have a little bit of this light green separating. Um, I am going to go in with this shade of green, the same one I used on her eyes. And just kind of go over. And then I'm going to take my brightest color and I will have to go probably over and blend some spots with that lightest green again. Coming out fairly well. That little spot on his foot I was going to leave. So it's kind of the same thing as pencils. Layer, layer, shade, shade, blend, blend. But um, Sometimes pencils you can get away with jumping shades more. Because with markers, you really need them to be able to blend to get that seamless. There is Pascal. Um, so I'm going to leave these colors out because I have to remember as I'm going, I want to pull some of these colors into the rest of the picture so everything goes together well. Um, obviously, I'm still going to have to pull in some purple or that background is just going to be silly. Um, but I know her outfit is going to be purple. I know the leaves are going to be green, so I need a flower color. Um, and then I need to do the bricks. So I think what I'm going to do for the clothes, let me test a couple colors. So I don't want to match the bricks 100% because we don't want her to blend in. That's a nice light pink. Um, that one might be a little bright. 
So I am going to just do the same thing. I'm going to do a base coat. The lace I will go back in and put in with a white gel pen. And then I will go in with a pencil. Where my little purple pencil ran off to. This one might be too dark, but I'm going to do the same thing, just add a little bit of shadow. Just enhancing the marker. And I will blend that out better when I find my little purple pencil that has ran away from me. So I will go ahead and pause this, fill in the clothing, and do the pencil work, and then... I will come back and show you what I decided for the flowers. Usually I have everything planned out as I go, but I do not have a plan for the flowers yet. Um, usually this cuff under here is going to be lighter than this up here, but because I'm going to go back and add pencils, it will look lighter when I'm done. I'm going to leave the lace for now, and then I think I will put a little more dimension on this ribbon as well. So. One last time, I will see you soon. If you have made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. All right, so here we are. This is our finished product. So obviously I got a little on this side. That's not too big of a deal for me. Um, I think she came out really well. So I did add some sparkly gel pin to her hair and to her outfit just to give her a little extra. Um, I did the flowers and pencil. I think it came out really well. I did decide I was going to go ahead and leave my bricks alone. I don't want to have too much detail in the background to distract from her. So, there is our finished piece. If you stayed with me, I thank you for following along and hanging out. Leave a comment down below. If you have any um, suggestions, anything you want to see, anything like that, go ahead and leave it down below and I will see you shortly in another video. Thanks for watching.